Harun Balkama, Mudar Pratap Singh, you're joining us on Influencer A-List. Today's episode has three women who pride themselves on being relatable in the realist sense. We have new age content creators who have redefined beauty on social media. Take a look at these candid conversations with Shraddha Gurung, YouTuber and influencer, Tarini Shah, Gen Z influencer and Asta Shah, digital content creator. Beauty and fashion is her forte. It's, it's, been, it's been quite an interesting up and down sort of a journey. Her content outlines body and skin positivity. I'm now also I'm sitting down just re-looking re at whatever I do and how I can do it in the most authentic way possible. News X influencer A-List proudly recognizes Shraddha Guru for influence in authentic content creation. Hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX Influencer A List, and I'm Aarti Krishnan. I have with me a very special guest today, uh, Shrata Gurung, who in fact is a beauty influencer. But she talks about body positivity, skin positivity, and more. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and speak to her. Shrata, thank you for joining our show. Tell us about your journey so far. How you got into content creation, and how your journey has been. Hi. So nice to see you guys again. And um, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me i think that's um really really kind of you guys so um we're starting with that i have been a content creator for over six years now um the first three i spent working uh, with a really nice big company where i was producing where i was the talent but i was also doing a lot of work behind the scenes and then post that i've been just an independent content creator full-time creator for the last uh, three years so it's been a crazy journey because it seems like i've already done and posted and shot every possible thing that i could so it's 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 been quite an interesting up and down sort of a journey Right, Shraddha, you mentioned that you were in fact working, uh, you were doing a full-time job and uh, now you're a full-time content creator. So tell us about the comparison in terms of the time you get now to do to fully focus on your content and has that then changed the quality of your content? And uh, is that something that you'd suggest that people you know, who are doing full-time jobs and are wanting to focus on their content creation, would you then just suggest you know, uh, jumping into it full-time? So um, I think... It was different when I had started, I was 19 when I started working, I was in college where I started like a full time job because I kind of knew that you know, this is where I should be. It felt right when I joined the company. Um, so it has been, um, it is quite challenging. I'll be very honest. It's very challenging doing a full time job with anything else involved not just content creation any any even to follow just a hobby i'm pretty sure you guys are crazy hours especially like on news channels like yours so it's always going to be like what do you want to do in your life and how much do you really want to do it like how badly do you really want to do it that with your real actual circumstances in life like if if at all finance is a problem which it was for me so I made sure that I did my job I made myself stable secure and that's when I you know started shifting my focus back on my content because I was a blogger before I had a full-time job so in if if at this point in time someone wants to do it I think it could be a tad bit easier given how COVID has completely transformed the working spaces and we're just right. mostly we're working out of our homes right so in that scenario, somehow I feel that you get a little more time to be able to focus on something else or to have something else to just keep yourself sane. When I was doing it, I was working crazy hours, say 15, 16 hours in the job. And then um, college, se padhai kar rahi thi. I wanted to graduate, like get good marks and all also. And then I was, whatever time I was getting in the morning, sham ko, raat mein, extra hours, I would work on my blog. I would try and learn how to, you know, put some codes in and stuff like that. So it's, I genuinely feel that it's one not easy. I, I've heard so many people say that, you know, nine to five easy hai, mujhe passion follow karna hai. But passion varies, right? It's not the same for everybody and everything is difficult if you're actually doing it imandari se. So I just say that if you want to do it, know that it's going to be a lot of work, but it's also going to be so gratifying at the end of the day that all of that effort will be worth it. Just we need to have a very um, focused mindset and also know the realistic aspects of creating content online because it's a highly saturated market as of now. And I'm saying it as 
as someone who's been here for a long time and who now also is again facing the same competition as if I just started, you know. So it's right, it's Shraddha, awesome. Speaking of competition, also, um, you know, I think then you would also feel the stress of having to stay up with trends, right? Having to keep up with trends. Is that something that you do? Uh, is that is also do you face the stress of having to keep up with the trends? I think um, I I feel like the most stressed person in the world at the moment. One because our jobs already very dynamic, right? There's no guarantee as to what is going to work tomorrow, and then it's also important to keep up with the foundation of what you had started with. So I do feel the pressure all the time. I'm not going to lie. I keep saying it on my social media as well. You know, these trends are really affecting the way I work because. it's not about your work anymore it's a lot about just plain entertainment in a very small format and for someone who has a very niche category such as beauty skin care makeup it's very difficult to keep up and you know just produce it's just like bed ho aur nikalo aise kaam nahi karna hai but i also feel that it's very important to keep up with them because business wise it's just a bad decision to ignore which i have been doing so i'm now also i'm sitting down just re re looking at whatever i do and how i can do it in the most authentic way possible hmm. right uh, i'm glad you brought up authenticity because you of course are talking about skin positivity a uh, body positivity and being real with your viewers right and that's what we're talking about this week as well mostly we're talking about being real with uh, you know the people who consume your content so how important is that to you and how do you ensure that you're always open and you're always uh, being real with and being you know a transparent uh, in a way with uh, the people who consume your content you know what i feel that um, being authentic is actually the easiest thing to do because when you are when you are pretending and when you are um, you know producing this image of you online you can only do it so much and if you can actually do it like full time it's a lot of work so the best possible way to keep yourself sane and keep it real is to just be yourself continuously you don't have to put on a you know facade because then doesn't differentiate us now from any any person else like influencers are relevant because people will find them relevant and that's how we came into being and that's how this profession is now is now booming right so i think um, i just i feel like i would much rather appreciate authenticity and a point of view when i am also consuming content because i am a consumer too and i just hope that anyone who crosses paths with me be it like in a digital world or in general has the same consistent happy experience you know fulfilling experience so i don't judge people based on body skin anything and i kind of keep the judgment low on myself also because if i am not judging anybody else then why should i be judging myself that's something that i keep in mind and that's that's just how i live my life online offline it's the same so it's actually it's quite easy shadha then have you always been like this in fact have beauty standards that you know are prevalent for quite a while now have they not affected you or have they affected you and you then figure out a way out of them so um i i have always been pretty chill pretty confident pretty like don't don't care not about anyone else not about myself also in the same regard because i was brought up like this it's very simple i think it depends a lot on your surroundings not just your parent parents or like your family in general but your surrounding in general where are you which company are you in so i i learned from a very young age because i am um, nepalese like my um, grandparents are from nepal right so it's a very clear distinction you can tell that this person doesn't necessarily look conventional indian even if i have been born in raised here so i saw that and i was like you know what it's it's something that's that's natural that's i don't have any control over it and if i don't have any control over it i should not even bother about what someone else is saying so i learned that pretty early on my own my mom taught me to you know just stay true to being a good person so that's always been my priority mm-hmm. abhi good person mein shakal nahi aati skin nahi aata body nahi aata so that's why i think it's been easy and i i kind of keep it like that because the more you talk about it and the more you normalize it not even talk about it like jhanda leke you know constantly tell hey you know what i am body positive not like that you just you just being yourself that's enough mm-hmm. so i think that set a much better standard than you shouting and using it for clout as well so it's always been like this thankfully great very grateful for that right shada then before you create your content right do you then uh, keep in mind the mental health both your mental health and also the people who are consuming your content like because like we've spoken about 
con- sometimes following trends means going against your natural nature um uh, you may not be comfortable following certain trends um and at the same time it might even be harmful for people consuming your content so do you then analyze and then pick and choose the trends that you follow uh because keeping you know mental health in mind is something that's important and it has uh, uh, come up in conversation now is that something that you ever consider i mean i i think i'm notoriously known for taking way too many breaks because um the transition from being a full time working person to just mm-hmm. a full time creator who's managing stuff on her own does not necessarily come from that background that can you know just finance itself so the the pressure of just being able to fund yourself is also constantly mm-hmm. there right so agar mere ko as a creator who sits at a very privileged position compared to a lot of other people if i can have that stress i make sure that you know none of my content speaks of that which is why i keep taking breaks which is why i pick and choose ultimately at the end of the day it's your profile right no one can force you to create any sort of content you will only yeah the pressure is there because i would have been sitting on millions if i had picked on every single trend and that works for people who genuinely like doing it i do right. so why you pick the fights right so i've picked mine and kind of keep that's always in the back of my mind that's wonderful shraddha thank you so much for joining us and telling us about your journey and the process behind how you create content it was great having you on our show thank you so much thanks for calling she is known for her relatability importance goes to both i'm not going to like let one be less like priority give them a less priority but yeah i do like manage it all together that way her content is gen z trendy and versatile i mold trends into what i would like them to be and get that audience that would like to see me and that's how i turn everything into making it relatable to my audience news ex influencer a list proudly recognizes Tarani Shah for influence in trendy content creation. Hello and welcome you're watching News X Influencer A list I'm Aarti Krishnan and I have with me a very special guest today uh, Tarani Shah who's a Gen Z content creator uh, you know somebody we can all relate to uh, and somebody who's always on par with trends now thank you for joining us today Tarani uh, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us about your journey of content creation where you started and where you are today First of all, I really, really like to thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. And about my journey, I actually started creating content like around two years ago. But I can started like focusing on content during like the pandemic. And since lockdown, I feel a lot. There was like a surge of people on social media just looking for content because we were in our houses, and that was our only source of entertainment. And I was lucky enough to be there at that time, creating content on the other side of it. and that actually is what kick started my career i could say and then since then i figured that this is something i really really like doing and i continue it and here i am today sarini so you're also studying right you're also pursuing your education while uh, having an actual uh, you know putting in effort uh, maintaining your page having an actual digital content creation um, you know occupation on the side so how does that feel and and how much effort does it take for you in fact to balance both of that uh so i feel sometimes it does get like really really overwhelming because assignments have deadlines and collaborations have deadlines like managing two deadlines and it does get a little stressful but i have a team of like people who manage me at monk entertainment and they help me out a lot with that aspect of it and when it comes to the education side of it i feel i have two elder sisters so the time management is something i have really really learned from them and my family is always there to help me out with anything i want so that has really helped me balance it all together but it does require a good to do list to make sure that both the things go out properly because they are equally important to me because education is important and this is something i really 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 love doing and is kind of like my job so the importance holds to both so i'm not going to like let one be less like priority give them a less priority but yeah i do like manage it all together that way right uh, tell me speaking of you know you're saying that your education is most important do you think that uh, maybe content creation itself can then be like a course uh, that that people would probably pursue or you know would you then see content creation as your side hustle and then also go ahead to pursue a career apart, you know in a different um, uh, field 
or would you then after your education go completely into content creation because that's something you love to do so currently i'm studying bachelor's in management studies and i'm doing marketing and what i'm doing is actually you know content creation does turn out to be digital marketing in one way when you start doing brand collaborations so they do have this little tiny like thread that connects them both but i feel i am more inclined toward creating content because it involves a lot of different aspects like scripting conceptualizing putting the things together idealizing editing and shooting videos so it's like you're learning so many different things together which can be applied throughout in various different fields like you if i have like ended up learning adobe photoshop i have ended up learning premiere pro i know how to work youtube monetization so there are these little little things that you learn through content creation i feel it can definitely end up being a course because the monetary aspect is there and this is just the start like there are so many content creators that are just coming up in the pandemic so the future of it looks massive to me and the brands itself they are coming to a lot of influencers with various campaigns to promote their products because there is a direct connect between the uh, people and the influencer so i feel the scope is massive and there can definitely be a course around it right and i would uh, definitely love to do of course mm -hmm. uh, tarani we were talking about you know the stress of having to balance your education um and content creation as well um you know what what then um, is the toll of it on your mental health because as a gen z content creator you also need to keep in mind a mental health of yourself and also the people who consume your content so how do you then uh, go about doing that uh so when it comes to that i feel talking to people does definitely help um uh, my family my sisters my mentors my management like and my friends themselves just talking to them about what's going on in my life and because of this i feel like i do am living my life i'm living like my dream life but i'm also want to loki do those 19 year old teenager things which sometimes i miss out on but just like you know talking to people around me helps me like live my life through them a little bit and that definitely helps my mental health i mean there's a lot of like pressure that i put on myself because you always there are so many people following you you want to make sure that the content that goes out to them is right because you have this power within you which you don't want to exploit or put it out in a bad way so every time a content piece goes up like keeping the check of other people of somebody might you know get triggered by this so you put warnings and this is something that goes on a lot around gen z content is putting up warnings that you know that this is what's going to be seen in this video so if you if it's going to trigger you do not watch it please so those little things that us gen z have got into this content creation world i feel has really helped maintain our own mental health as well as others as well so yeah Suddenly, then, does uh, you know? Obviously, as a content creator and as a Gen Z content creator, like you mentioned, um, staying on par with trends is something that you would like to do. Something that you aim to do, right? To create uh, relatable content. So then, does that add to the stress factor? Because you you always need to be on par with trends. You need to do, uh, you know, you need to then create reels and content and continuously be, uh, you know, updated with all of the trends. Does that then add to your stress? um sometimes it does sometimes i get this thing like you know i have to make sure that all of my content pieces are relatable to everyone but in reality it cannot be because there are so many people and it takes a while to build that audience that is going to relate exactly to what you do and that comes out with sharing pieces of you and sometimes people will not relate to it and i feel that is an understanding that eventually develops so while i do trends i do a lot of trends i love doing trends cuz it not only helps content but it's also something that's quick to get people relating to it but i also add my twist to it because with trends i don't want to just you know melt into this world of social media i want to mold it into something that's me that's unique to me so every trend i do i add like a little bit of editing element because that's kind of like my usp like editing i really like doing that so that's how i mold trends into what i would like them to be and get that audience that would like to see me and that's how i turn everything into making it relatable to my audience so right. yeah. uh, certainly then you know final question about uh, uh, content creation itself then do you focus on being real with the people who consume your content as well because we've seen that um, on the internet itself um, Im body image issues can crop up because of uh, the kind of media that we're consuming and that is an age old truth right um, now with your content are you trying to change that by being real and by being open with the people who con consume your content 
uh, I feel that's something everyone's got to now because lockdown and everyone's mm. in their homes and I feel everyone's become more comfortable with themselves even I myself have like gone through a lot of insecurities and it takes a while to put those insecurities out in public when like there's so many eyes watching you mm. and you're worried about the opinions of people which is very natural to do so but um, also like seeing other people on social media doing it like putting themselves out there dealing with their insecurities encourages you as a person as well so that's what I'm trying to do is slowly and steadily one step at a time trying to put myself out there just the way I am and like you know looking at people like I've seen comments where people are like I'm so glad that you shared your insecurity because that gives me the power to share my insecurity as well Mm -hmm. and we are all turning social media into this place where you can not only dress up and look as beautiful as you want to but also shows that even if you're not dressed up, it's just as beautiful. So we are all turning it into this world and I'm really glad I'm a part of that revolution. So yeah. That's great, Tarani. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your journey and uh, your process of creating content. Uh, Kudos to you and all the best. Thank you for joining us. She is known for her empowering content. I should start creating content which is motivational, etc. She is relatable and real on social media. You can put stuff what you like plus what your audience consumes. NewsX influencer A-List proudly recognizes Asta Shah for influence in realistic content creation. Hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX Influencer A-List. I'm Aarti Krishnan. I have with me a very special guest today, uh, Asta Shah, who's a digital content creator. And she has been uh, empowering uh, people who have the vitiligo uh, condition. And she's been embracing it. She's been real with uh, her viewers, with her followers. And she's going to tell us about her uh, digital content creation and journey today. Uh, welcome to the show, Asta. Why don't you start by telling us about uh, what, when you got into content creation and uh, how your journey has been so far. Thank you for having me here. Um, I would like to start with, just give you an idea of what my skin condition is. I have vitiligo, which is a skin condition where the color, the, the, the cells which give color to your skin, melanocytes, they stop functioning. So they start losing um, color in patches. It can either spread throughout your body or remain in certain parts of your body. Um, so um, obviously I've had like a long journey with vitiligo. Um, but this year in March, um, I just thought of putting out, I always wanted to inspire people. But this year, I thought I'll just put out a video on social media because I always wanted to inspire people and see how it actually does. Is it actually inspiring people? So I put up a video of my transformation of my old videos versus now. And that video hit 32 million views on Instagram. That real. Um, I think that's where it all started. I got the confidence that, yes, there are people who are taking this in a good way and they may get inspired. So, yeah, I should start creating content, which is motivational, etc. Right. And uh, Asta, you also have a career in finance uh, apart from content creation. So tell us yeah. how you balance both uh, a full-time job and also content creation because both require almost equal amount of effort. I agree. Both require equal amount of effort. Uh, but for me, content creation is, I also love obviously finance, being a financial analyst, but this is like a stress buster after working all day. I feel coming back to this, making content, ideating, being creative uh, is a very big thing. So I like doing it and I like making content. So I do, like I keep it for, for right now. It's like a stress buster. It's a hobby and dancing has always been my hobby. So I make a lot of content even around dancing. So yeah, I love doing it. It is tough, but I don't think it's impossible. Right, of course, Asta also. And then the question comes uh, about the people who are consuming your content, right? The people, your followers, people who view your content on a daily basis. Um, you have to be real for them. Um, you have to be open for them. Does that then uh, provide a, be- become a stressor uh, for you in your day- day-to-day life where you need to you know, go through your content and ensure that you're not, uh, you're always being yourself and you're not, you know, then... Um, sort of uh, playing with the mindset of the people that view your content, that could be an added stressor. Have you ever felt that?
uh so i believe that you need to be yourself in this you also need to create content which your audience consumes uh but yeah you need to be yourself i do not think of it as a minus point i think of it as a plus point whatever however you look your external appearance should not matter about what other people think to you just be yourself just put out whatever you want art creativity anything your own talent uh the audience who do not perceive it in a good way will not follow you and the audience who love it will follow you so in the end you can put stuff what you like plus what your audience consumes said as that you have you ever you know then received hate online because you have been receiving a lot of love online and a lot of people feeling encouraged by you feeling motivated by you and you know to express themselves people who have your condition people who don't as well you know to just embrace themselves but have you then been also seeing the other side of it the darker side of the internet where you're then getting hate um you know in terms of in terms of the beauty standards and beauty ideals that uh, we're seeing today okay so um i agree hate comments is a very big part as well social media i think it's not just me but every creator goes through this you do get hate comments it is a part of social media but i always feel the positive comments outweigh the negative comments so you should always look if there are out of 100 people if there are 10 people hating on you you should look at the 90 people who are loving you it i'm not saying it's easy it does affect you but i think it's okay i did get a lot of hate comments because every time in all my uh, videos i'd always specify that my vitiligo has spread naturally but i did get hate comments about doing surgery and bleaching my skin etc but um, i know what it is i know what the truth is everyone on the other side is always assuming something else what you are doing but you know what you are doing right so i think you should continue being you should continue doing what you are doing because you are doing the best right uh, asta also tell us about your journey so far and what about content creation keeps you going um, and like you said you know handling both a full time job and content creation is a lot of effort what keeps you going and what about content creation is something that you always it, that makes you want to pursue it further uh the one thing the major thing that keeps me going is um when i put out a motivational video and someone comes back to me and says asta you have with like very confidently put out such good videos i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to also make my profile public i am also going to put out and show myself to the world that i am the way i am i get such messages and i'm just like at least like it's like a part of my achievement even if like one person gets inspired it makes my day i think that's what keeps me going even if it's a dance people get inspired and be like if she can do it why not me so i just feel like people looking at that keeps me going things what you like to do you should always do so that's another thing that keeps me going uh it is again it is tough with the job but um it is it's fun it's not something which you cannot like you do cannot do it um right now i'm not sure if i will definitely pursue it as a long term career but there are many people doing it and i think it is a very very good career option it makes you versatile it gives you the opportunity to put out your talent your creativity to the world and you can show your other side to the world as well for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon